Well, um, all right, in the end there, uh, it, there's always a moment in these press briefings where it gets a little heated. I want to go to Hadley Heath Manning. And, and Hadley, without, um, you know, judging one way or the other how it went, I mean, that, that wasn't a pretty aggressive exchange in, in the end. And I'm wondering um, what you made of it. Well, sometimes you get some heat, sometimes you get some light, sometimes light and heat go together. So what we saw there sort of exemplifies some of the relationship that the Trump administration has had with, with certain outlets in the press, with certain members of the press corps, um, trying to defend their actions every step of the way and focus on moving ahead with their agenda. Of course, after last week's fumble on the health care bill, Trump and his team are looking forward to focusing on tax reform, infrastructure, energy, and some of the executive actions you heard Spicer speaking about today. But there can continually mired in some of the questions about the Russia probe and about this latest um, hearing with Sally Yates that didn't happen. That's and right. so playing defense and offense at the same well, time. Let me ask you this. Are doing. And if you get mad at me, you have every right to because this is going to sound like a sexist question. That when he oh, pointed to her and said, quit shaking your head, words to that effect, um, he could just as easily have said that to a man. Um, so as a man, I mean, I'm not taking offense or umbrage to it one way or the other, nor would I if I were the questioner. But I'm betting, I am betting in the media, in, in short order, it will get a great deal of attention. I could be wrong, but what did you make of that? Well, I think what you're pointing out, Neil, is that some behaviors and some um, things that we might say are appropriate or inappropriate. And then there's the question of sexism. So I don't know if it's appropriate for the press secretary to tell a member of the press corps how, you know, what posture to take or whether or not to shake her head. Whether that I think person the, the is a male of, or female, right? Ex exactly. Right, so right. I think the, the more important question was, was it appropriate um, rather than was it sexist? All right. You just rescued me. What? from what would have certainly been a very, an avalanche of negative tweets, which should still come. But uh, let me get also your take on, on whether the administration is okay with this new agenda. And one of the reporters, I forget whom, uh, you know, had, 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 had said, you said earlier that the president was going to be working actively with Democrats on going back to health care and all that. I think by extension, even the tax package. Um, but Paul Ryan had let's if we could, we could work with Republicans or words to that effect and, and, and get it going again. So two different signals there where Paul Ryan wants to try to cobble something together, let's say on health care, working with the same Republicans he was working with before with little chance or certainly little overtures to to Democrats. Did I misread that or are they on the same page on that or what? Well, I think if you listen carefully to what President Trump said last week, he said he was open to working with Democrats, but I also think his expectation is, and maybe the expectation of others, including Speaker Ryan, would be that Democrats eventually will somehow come crawling to President Trump with, with hopes of changing the Affordable Care Act, because as we head into open enrollment this fall, we know that there are at least 16 counties in the state of Tennessee where there are zero health insurance companies participating in the exchanges. That means the people in those counties who might get a subsidy or tax credit have no options for where to right. buy health insurance. And at that point, we really do have to ask, when will Democrats come to the table? Will they come to the table? Will they put the needs of well, Americans I'm reading like what those Speaker in the Ryan was saying, ahead of politics? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm reading what Speaker Ryan is saying, that he doesn't appear to be optimistic. Maybe it was just a Freudian slip, or he just excluded them uh, accidentally. But I'm reading that he's going to try to revisit this, whatever they revisit, on repeal and replace, or whether it's together, what have you, without him. Now, I could have misheard it, but if that is the case... Then what? No, I think Speaker Ryan understands, and Americans everywhere should understand, that if we want a free market, patient-centered, limited government health care bill, it's going to be more likely that Republicans come to a consensus on those ideals uh, rather than extending so you wouldn't you know, need, the, you wouldn't the consensus need, to the middle. You wouldn't need Democrats in that event. In that, in that event, if we, if we can right. get to a simple majority and we use the budget reconciliation process, then it is certainly possible for Republicans to pass a very partisan health reform bill. Unfortunately, that's what the Affordable Care Act was, and that's why the health care issue has become so polarized. To put it mildly, if you can just stay there, Hadley, and uh, Jerry Willis is joining us right now. Jerry, I want you to respond to this to get clarification on it. This is Sean Spicer uh, telling our Blake Berman what he thinks of where this health care thing stands. Take a look. Is the White House currently involved in any renegotiations of the health care bill? And if so, in, in what manner? Um, staff has met with individuals and listened to them. Um, so I don't know how detailed you want to. I mean, is, are we, have we had some discussions and listened to ideas? Yes. 
Um, are we actively planning an immediate strategy? Not at this time. All right, so two different vibes there, Jerry. One from the speaker saying it's kind of full steam ahead, which prompted this market rally, which continues now at session highs up 122 and a third points. Nothing was dis dissuaded from that argument, given what Spicer said. But what do you read into that? Well, look, I think what Spicer is saying is there's no clear action plan at the White House. Now, Paul Ryan may want to pick up the pieces, and I think there is an opportunity to do that, and I'll tell you why. Because my sources say in meetings with the Freedom Caucus, listening to the House Republican Study Committee, here's how he described the mood in those meetings. There's a pall over everything. It's seven stages of grief. Different from what you've heard them say publicly, very different behind closed doors. There are options here to talk to these Republicans. And flip side of that, Neil, when you look at the Democrats, this idea that somehow Democrats are going to jump on, on Trump's bandwagon, no less than Bay, Ben Ray Lujan, Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee Chair, saying, ain't no way we're getting together. In fact, uh, if you try to come and repeal Obamacare yet again, we're coming at you with both fists. So I don't really see that open door coming from Democrats. Not yet, anyway. All right. So, Hadley, you're hearing that, and I'm wondering then if the markets are jumping the gun then, because they read into that far more action than maybe appears to be the case at face value. Well, one piece of good news, you heard Spicer mention some of the executive action that President, can, President Trump uh, can take when it comes to energy, when it comes to the clean power plan, when it comes to getting uh, pipelines like the Dakota Access and the Keystone up and running. So those are things that the market can respond to, uh, which are not in question because, of course, those are unilateral decisions from the White House. On the other hand, we heard Spicer today talk about more issues than simply the health care issue, tax reform and infrastructure. And uh, I believe it was Blake from, uh, from Fox Business who also ask, you know, if you fumbled on the health care issue, why, can, why should we believe uh, that Congress and the White House can work together on these other big ticket right, items? Right. Well, the, the answer is that they are very different and that they come with different constituencies and the partisanship within those issues is not as strong as it is on health care. But, you know, to that point, Jerry, I see more partisanship and more differences certainly on, on the health care thing even now than I do on the tax thing. I'm not saying, and, and certainly Valley's point, that, that the tax cuts are going to be a walk. I mean, there are differences among super conservatives who want them paid for, revenue neutral, uh, you know, want to work this out oh, no. vigorously. But I, I'm wondering there, I'm not sure um, that the, the way the market's responding, and everyone loves an up market if you're along the market, is justified given the fact that they're still going with health care and to straighten that out. <laughs> I think we're a long way to straightening that out. But I think the idea that tax reform is easier is just wrong on its face. It's another repeal and replace. You have to take out existing tax policy and put in new tax policy. And it, and it requires a lot of coming together over very difficult issues. The idea that tax reform is something we all agree on, just can't buy that. All right. Guys, I want to thank you both very, very much. Again, just taking a peek at what's going on. Wall Street does not.